I do give honor to God this evening in the house of the Lord. I thank God for early rising this morning. Yes. And we were just still on this side. Got up with a real mind to let God be God. And we learn that and we know that and beside him there's no other God. God is all wise. Never makes a mistake. I love him. I praise him. I look out there at all of us that we are healed by the power of God. And as I was looking and thinking, he's in the house right now. I know he's here because you can feel his presence. And I love him because he said he'll put no more on us yeah. we are able to bear. Right. Thank God for it. Right. I give honor to the family, which part of it is my family. Yeah. Yeah. And if part of it be my family, I thank the whole is. Yeah. God is with you. And I heard about Gregory. And he left to you good memories. And now you have to think on these things. Yes. Because however it is, God is with us. Yes. I glorify him for that. I give honor to you all that you are able, by the grace of God, to look up. Yes. Look up yes. and look back and see where God has brought us from. Yes. I've been there. It's always strange when death comes. But he told us that flesh and blood shall not enter the kingdom of God. And now uh, Gregory is resting from his labor. And in that day when God calls us to justice, he'll be done overcome. So I thank God today for all of us, the people of God, my bishop, associated bishop is up here, all of the current clergy is up here, and all the dignitaries. I call them all that. I got scared when they said I'm going to stand up here for all these people. <laughs> Frighten me. But here I am, I promise God that I will do the best I can. Oh, yeah. And when I do that, it's good enough. Yeah. God is good. Yeah. Not sometime, but all the time. God is good. I feel it. I thank God for you, Mr. McGee, the funeral home staff, Mr. Jim McGee, and his staff. Yeah. Does wonderful work. If I let, and I, I, I cry, everybody in here, I thank God for you. Yeah. Let me say it like that. Yeah. And we gonna go on, and we don't want my daughter back there, my goddaughter, to get too much more upset yeah. because God got it in His hand. Yeah. He said, "Bring your burdens to Him and leave them there. He will fix. Come to a place and say, how shall ever be fixed." Yeah. All right. And, and, and Gregory and Lamar, he's resting. No more trouble, no more sorrow, no more hardships. We had the reviewing and we had the crowning and we gonna pray. May we bow by my head. Most holy and righteous God. Here we are one more time coming before you. Because you say you're merciful. You're compassionate. And most of all, you love us. You know what the family is going through right now? We want you to soothe this sorrow. Heal those wounds. 
satisfy their soul. In Jesus' name. You're God and you done act. And nothing can change. In the name of Jesus. God, we want you to bless us here today. If we are not close enough to each other, make us one. In the name of Jesus. We don't know where the journey going to take us. But help us to be ready. In the name of Jesus. You said, Father, lay it inside everything that's going to affect our lives. And run this race with patience. Beg to be like him. If you be like the Lord, one day we shall overcome all these things that's happening in this earth. And remember that God is God. Strengthen the family. And all of us in here need strength in one way or the other. We are here, God, and we can't make it through it without you. Thy will be done. And when it said that will be done in earth, it don't mean I did that dirt, but this body here is made from the earth. Thy will be done in us as it is in heaven. Praise God and uplift today. Somebody burdened down, but you uplift. And we thank you for it. And when we've done all we can do on this side of life, if we've done your will, we'll have a better place of rest in the name of Jesus. And we all ask all of this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And that's the prayer. And we're going to have the Old Testament scripture coming from Elder Kenneth Dupree and the New Testament coming from Minister Elder Moody. And then I'm going to say after that, the choir was saying. Let the church say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. A very familiar scripture only coming from verse 1 and 2. The 121st song, I will lift up my eyes unto the hill. Yes. From which come my help. Yes, Lord. My help coming from the Lord. Yes, Lord. Which made heaven and earth. Yes. May God have a blessing in the readers and the hearers of his holy word. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, Praise the Lord everybody. Praise the Lord. Amen. Protocol has already been established into the family today. We are praying for you that God will give you the strength and the peace that you need in this hour. We will be reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, oh, yes. verses 51 through 58. Come on now. And it reads as written, all right. All right. Behold, I show you a mystery. Uh -huh. We shall not all sleep, but we shall, we shall all be changed. Yeah. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. At the last trumpet, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be risen incorruptible, yes. and we shall be changed. Yes. For this corruptible must put on incorruptible, corruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. Yes, so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and the mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, well, death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is thy sting? Yes. O oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and strength, the strength of, of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, Unmovable, always abounding in the works of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. The word of God for God's people. Amen. Amen.
Department of Corrections, Special Management Union, all this has to be done. Motorcycle McCabe, Honor Guard, the Lions High School, Georgia Brigman. And after that, we'll be best with a tribute from his auntie, Deshante Bibbin Sloan. And so, as you starting off as I knew him, two minutes. Everybody, my 
name is um, Chris. I'm a little nervous, so I have to write it down so I don't forget. Um, I met Greg back in middle school. I remember when he walked in with the hurricane and Chris Brady's all over. Uh, we like football together, but our passion we had was band, was drums. Um, drums was a passion that we had. Uh, we had a 20 plus year friendship and just looking through Facebook, man, I'm, I'm telling you, just it seems like people knew him four months, knew him four years, it was all the same. Greg was Greg with everybody. Um, he was his true self, and everybody know Greg was a comedian. <laughs> a comedian, like, in my head, I'm over there laughing, because after, you know, they get done singing, that boy would have said, that boy, good. <laughs> Greg would have said that. I, I can hear him now saying, I know that chicken about to be <laughs> I can hear him saying that. Um, but, you know, we're just, just guaranteed to laugh, man. We can go to restaurants. It was his birthday every time. <laughs> um, <laughs> riding the four wheelers in the woods, wearing airsoft guns, like with crew over here, all of us, man, just just some of the best. And like I can tell you, I, I told you when he was getting ready to leave for the army, I could not ask for a best friend. We held each other accountable. <coughs> he checked on me when I was deployed. When he was in Korea, we was all for each other. We had a we had brotherhood, and it'll never be broken. <coughs> I appreciate you so much for giving me somebody. I want to give honor to God and my parents. The mama right here, I, I want to say thank you for giving me a brother. I never had a blood brother, but being with the band in the high school, um, meeting Greg, he's sitting in the band, we just, we just click instantly. And it's like Chris was saying, we always laugh. It, we none of us we never argue and a lot of friends they argue all the time but us right here we were gonna laugh all the time we're gonna stay in the parking lot all night me i might be the first one because i had to curse you but um i'm just grateful for the times that we had together and i know greg he was big on love he was big on love every time you got off the phone with him bro i love you it wasn't ain't no i by man no it's always i love you to anybody that he touched he gave out love. So it's just like I walk with Christ. We have to walk with love. No matter if you upset with somebody or if you up high and mighty, you have so many accomplishments, you still gotta give honor to God and still walk with love no matter what you are doing. And Greg, he did that. And you can tell, you can tell how God is in people. They don't have to go to church all the time, but it's like you can tell that God shines his light through each other, through all of us. And Greg, he had that light on him. So like Chris was saying, we hold each other accountable. Uh, it's like he's talking to certain girls and stuff like that before he met his, this lovely lady right here. It's like, great, nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope, and, and, and vice versa, but that's the accountability of, of that brotherhood that we have. So I just wanna say I'm grateful for, for giving us a brother. stories I can tell, but it'd take way more than two minutes, and we can all talk about that for a long time. <laughs> Greg, Greg is probably the, one of the funniest people I've ever met, one of the most loving people I've ever met. Like, like my brother 
brothers were saying this. <clears throat> he held you accountable. He held me accountable. Uh, he's got me through some of the roughest times. I, I can call Greg in the middle of the night. Didn't even have to explain what's wrong. He could tell from my voice that he was in the car and he was coming. And I loved him for that. saying he, Greg wouldn't get off the phone unless you said I love you and I, <clears throat> at first we never used to kind of say that we'd get off the phone, kind of quit hanging up, he would get mad at me for hanging up, I would, I would call Greg random days, just be like, you're all right, he'd be like, yep, and I'd hang up the phone, I just, <laughs> he would get so sick of that, uh, he started forcing me to say I love you and man, he just, I knew right then, man, I had a brother for life. Even, even with him not here, he's still my brother for life. My life. And I just want to tell his mom I, I appreciate you. You, you were so wonderful. next to each other. We were always doing everything together. Even into my adulthood, Greg came to numerous family events with me. <coughs> my mom, my dad, they know he is a part of our family. But that family started with band, that Georgia Bridgman brought us closer together. And if it's okay with everyone, if it's okay with you, I wanted to send them off with one last hustle drill. Is that okay? So if we have any former, any current Georgia Bridgman, anyone that support the Georgia Bridgman, Gonna do this last hustle drill. We're a little short of the 350 members that we had our senior year. <laughs> but I want y'all to let make it loud and proud so he can hear us, so Mr. Todd can hear us, all the former Georgia Bridgman that are up there looking down on us can hear us. So if you can please stand, George Bridgman, lock it in.
just like they said, we can sit up here, we can talk, and it'll take us way longer than two minutes to say all the great things you got to say about you, but thank you for being a great friend, thank you for being a great brother, thank you for being somebody I can always depend on, somebody I can always call whenever I was down, somebody who always put their best foot forward every day. I've never seen you down. I've never, ever seen you down, and I commend you for that. And if, and if we can take anything from you, y'all, I always put y'all best foot forward. Uh, gee, I, I never seen this man have a bad day. And a bad day is just a part of life, but he never showed, showed it. So, thank you. I love you, and you're going to live on through many, many, many people. Love you, too. Bye. Sometimes he'll smile. I'm like, why are you smiling? Man, you wrong. <laughs> he'll come back and apologize to me. But this was a genuine, genuine, caring man right here, man. And y'all did an amazing job raising him. Um, two weeks ago, we went to Mr. Furman's mom, Mr. Turnbull's mom, Furman. So we went to my parents' house and he ate it. But I tell you, my mom and dad fell in love with him in less than 30 minutes. They would ask me, when the next time you bring him back for a meal? Because he, he enjoyed himself. He's gonna be true and be missed. Yes. Truly yes. missed. Um, as you see, look at the GDC family. We love you. And I know y'all guys do. <clears throat> I can't say much more than anybody has already said. Um, I came down here from Memphis, Tennessee. Um, just me, my wife, my kids, my friends, no outsiders. And I came to SMU. I adopted a family. Oh, Jesus. I adopted brothers. Um, Greg, we don't use the term friends when it comes to our team. This is a whole family you see here. And that was our brother. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, one thing we're going to always remember is that Thank smile. You, that smile, no matter what you're going through, no matter how your day been, he gonna smile just like that. Mm -hmm. And you gonna forget about everything that came through that day, no matter what it was. One thing I can say that can sum up how we really feel about him, we love him. This is love. It's a hole in our hearts. But we love him. Yes, yes, Lord. And I promise you, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. we never I want to say thank you to his family for allowing us to be a part of his life. Yes. Because y'all laid the foundation. And that man was something special. And y'all shared that special man with us. So on behalf of myself, SMU, SMU 13, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of, uh, y'all hear me in the back? <laughs> <laughs> On behalf of uh, GDC, SMU, we got a plaque for you and your family. It reads, in love and memory of Gregory Arnold, date of birth, 3292. The dedication and faithfulness of Sergeant Arnold will be greatly missed. He was an inspiration to those he worked with and a friend to many. Starter watch was 216.23, and a watch was 5924. Your family has special management unit.
remember Greg being upset one time. And uh, he left out that yard. He had a little fold, and he seemed like he left out there on two wheels. <laughs> I ain't never seen him upset, mad. And I thank God for my grandbaby. And I just, I know God is able. And I say, I always tell people, when it get too hard for God, when it get too hard for us, it's just right for God. And I had to wind up telling my own self that, Lord, this is hard. And I said, if you don't help me, I ain't gonna make it. And I know, I know who the Lord is. I'm saved, I'm sanctified, Holy Ghost fear and fire baptized. And I thank God for my grandbaby because when he was in Valencia, he would come by every week to see his grandma. He came by there one day and I was walking and he said, Grandma, he said, where you going, Grandma? I said, boy, I'm walking, I got to go, I got to, I got to walk, I got to get some of this weight off of me. He said, well, all right, Grandma, I'll be back. So he came back two days. He said, Grandma, well, you ain't walking. I said, boy, that, that didn't last but just two days. I, I can't do that. And me and him just laughed, just laughed, just laughed. And he came by one day, and I was sick, and I was sitting down in the den. I had all that little table. And I had all my medicine just laid out on the table. And he went to laugh. I said, Greg. What's wrong with you? He said, Grandma, I thought about what Ricky Smiley said about his grandmama. I said, Well, what did Ricky Smiley say? He said, Ricky Smiley said, When I saw that medicine on your table, he said, Ricky Smiley said, His grandmama had so much medicine, said, She had medicine to remind her and medicine to do it, said, She forgot to take down the Christmas decoration. I mean, I'm just just And I thank God. Allowing us to keep him 32 years. I was there when he came into the world, and I'm here to see him go out. And I tell you, y'all, I know some of them call it nothing but a cry, baby, but it's more than cry. Him, it's a deep hurt. It's a deep hurt. But I know God is able. And I thank God for Stephen McGee and and all the officers. When I look around, and I just see all the officers, I know my baby was well frog up. Right. And he was a good child. Yes, he he now, I never know that he talked back to me. No, never talked back to his grandma. And I, I just like everybody said, humble. And Lord, we need your power. If God don't help us, I don't care how much Holy Ghost we have, if God don't help us, we won't be able to stand and stand. But I'm glad that God got the power. Amen. And that's who I'm trusting in. I'm trusting in God. Because somebody asked me, said, somebody was saying, he came and got Greg. I said, baby, that could have been me. That could have been you. That could have been any of us. God came and got who he wanted. And every day, me and him would text every day. And he would never fail to tell me, I love you. And if uh, Stephen McGee, I thank God for y'all. He said, we want to be with y'all Sunday because we want to give y'all that time. Yeah. Oh, look at the people. <laughs> the song said, what they're doing. Standing at the judgment. We got to stand at the judgment one day. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I want to tell my grandchildren, all my children, everybody that in the house, God, I thank you for the Holy Ghost. We better get right with God and do it now. Because we don't know who's going to be next. And I just, McGee, if you don't mind, I got to sing just a little bit of this song. I'm leaning and depending on Jesus. Because if Jesus going to help me, I'm going to be able to stand the storm because this is a storm. This is a storm. Thank you, 
Bill is the mom. I want you to hit it for me. Why is this I want y'all to help. Everybody out there. Because we need Jesus. sister began to speak for him. Yes. And we had the time to stop it. <laughs> but you know what? They thought he was going to have to need speech therapy and all of that stuff and you know somebody special to help him out. But God worked a miracle. Yes he did. Yes, and my nephew stopped stuttering. Mm -hmm. He grew up to be a great young man. He wanted to have an elective in high school one year. 
and there was nothing else open. Mr. Todd called my sister. My sister called me. I said, Mr. Todd called you? I said, if Mr. Todd is calling you, you let him get in the van. I said, because normally, you all band members correct me if I'm wrong. You normally have to start band in seventh grade, work your way up to high school to become a part of the Georgia Bridge. But my nephew got in, his grandfather was proud. He paid for him every year. It didn't matter what Greg needed, how much it cost, where they were going. His grandfather, my dad, made sure that that young man stayed in. And he did it with a passion. He decided that he wanted to join the Army. He was overweight. They gave him an option to lose weight and he could get in. He worked hard that year, lost numerous pounds that Auntie probably recognized. <laughs> but he got in. Yes, he did. And he went. And he was successful when you read his obituary, like the other Parker says. He decided that he wanted to get out. The moment he got, I'm just giving you all this, just a picture in your mind how God kept him. The moment he got out, he was in Hawaii. It wasn't a few days or a few weeks after that he got out and came home. Those black hawks start falling out the sky. This one fell. That many soldiers were killed. I said, well, thank you, Jesus, my nephew came home. And another week, another one fell. Some more soldiers were killed. I said, Lord, I thank you. You brought my nephew home. He decided he wanted to work for the Georgia Department of Corrections. I was scared again. <laughs> but I've always encouraged my children, my nieces and nephews, follow your dreams. Work hard at it. You can do it. I know you can. Y'all good kids. Y'all can do it. He applied. He did what they asked. He got the job. He lost his job at the Balancer State Prison. You know why? Wasn't that he was doing anything wrong. He was standing up for somebody else, trying to save their job, and he lost his own. But he didn't let that stop him. He continued to work jobs until he decided that he wanted to join the Georgia Department of Corrections in Jackson, Georgia. He tried it, he applied, and God blessed him to get it. He didn't stop there. He decided that he wanted to go further. And as you can see, he was on what they call the CERT team. What does that stand for? Is it certified? Correctional emergency response team. Okay, correctional. I knew it was the emergency response team, but I didn't know if it was certified or correctional. He joined that team. That still wasn't enough. He wanted to be even more. He studied to become a sergeant. Yes, he did. He achieved that. Yes, he did. Did he love his mom? Sometimes he made me jealous. <laughs> <laughs> because, let me tell you something. It's not about where you're from, what size the city is, what kind of home you live in. That's right. This young man and his siblings, they celebrated this lady right here. And I give honor to my sister. They celebrated her. Her birthday, they celebrated their mom. Christmas, they celebrated their mom. Mother's Day, they celebrated their mom. Just because they celebrated their mom. And I thank God for them. Did she struggle some with them? Yes, she did. She did. But one thing for sure, my sister laid a foundation to be respectful, honor, be a good person. As someone said, put your best foot forward. Whatever you're going to try to do, do it good. And that's what my nephew did. When he came to Atlanta, he went ahead of me. And when I got up there, I was glad that he was up there. Because it seemed like the times that I felt like I was getting a little homesick or lonely, it never failed. He said, uh, uh, auntie, I was going to come back. I said, well, come on. He drive 45 minutes to come see us. Or he'll text me and say, Auntie, I'm coming to church. I said, well, come on. 
I was the proudest auntie sitting up in that church to see my big nephew. Y'all called him big nephew. <laughs> he didn't come in a suit and tie. He didn't have on no floor shines. He would have on a green shirt. Some of y'all call them Magellan shirts. Some of y'all oh, call them Columbia. Columbia shirts. He would have that on, a pair of khakis, and his Georgia boots. <laughs> when he slid in there next to Auntie, made my chest rise. Because I loved him. He was respectful. And I, t I text my sister, I said, mm, and send her a picture. My nephew here to see me today. <laughs> and she said, I already knew he was coming. <laughs> you had just shared the wealth. And, 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 and that was the kind of nephew he was. He was big. He believed in giving really good hugs. And on the 28th was the last time he hugged me. He rode in on his motorcycle and see how good God is. When he pulled in, I took a snapshot of him pulling in, parking the bike, turning the key off, bringing that big thigh over that seat. <laughs> and when he stood up, that picture that they just showed y'all, he looked at me at the porch and he just smiled. I said, big nephew, you made it. You know, he was just a gentle giant. He was an example to all the nieces and nephews. And I hope that you all take a look around today to see the people that he impacted that was able to be here. But if you're fortunate enough to go online or when the rear roll back around next year, just to see how many people he impacted. I thank God for him. This was a tragic to our family, yes, Lord. to his friends, and to his coworkers. But God yes, has lost, and he's going to help us through. Yes. He didn't get a chance to retire, so his auntie gonna do the best she can and see if we can lay his uniform. Jesus. How do I say goodbye to what we times that made us laugh outweigh the bad I thought we'd get to see Thought we get to see tomorrow, and I thought we get to see forever, but forever.
Graceville Temple. Resolution. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for, my me for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Matthew 11, 28 through 30. Whereas Brother Gregory Lamar Arnold Jr. passed from this life on May 8th, year 2024. Pastor Dorothy Owens, Elder Clifford Owens, and the members of Board Braswell Temple Church of God in Unity deem it fitting to write this resolution on behalf of his mother, sister, Faricia Davis, and his father, brother Gregory Arnold Sr., and all the family that is left behind to mourn his passing. Whereas the family and acquaintances of brother Gregory Lamar Arnold Jr., are deeply saddened at his departure, as are all who are touched by his generous spirit, kindness, laughter, and infectious smiles. Words could not fully express the joy he has brought to so many. Therefore, be it resolved that we pray all who are now in mourning take comfort from the word of God. 2 Corinthians 1, 3, and 4. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ the Father of mercies and to God of all comfort, who comfort us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Therefore, be it resolved 
that we bow in submission to a greater will than our own and rest in the knowledge of John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, I give unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Therefore, be it resolved that a copy of this resolution be kept in the church records and original given to the family for future reference. Humbly submitted on May the 19th year, 2024, with sincere love, Pastor Dorothy Owens, Boyd Braswell Temple, Church of God in Unity. Body of Christ of Havana, Florida. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Psalm 1, 1 and 2. Whereas the Almighty God has given our beloved brother Gregory Lamar Arnold Jr., we, Bishop Jerome Shower Sr., Pastor, and the members of the Body of Christ deem it fitting and most appropriate to write this resolution on behalf of our own Elder Clifford Owens and Pastor Dorothy Owens and all the family that is left behind to mourn his loss. Be it resolved that we as a church family feel this is just a small token of our love to be shown in few words given as a tribute to a dear son, grandson, brother, and friend who has gone on before us. Let us now bow our heads in humble submission. The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The God of Jacob defend thee, send thee help from the sanctuary, and strengthen thee, strengthen thee out of the Zion. Remember all thy offerings and keep thy sacrifices. Amen. Also, let it be resolved that a copy of this resolution be kept on church record and the original given to the family for future reference. Humbly submitted on the 15th day of May, year 2024, with love, Bishop Jerome Shower Sr., the Body of Christ. Amen. everybody in the building on today. Thank God for my wife. Amen. Now if y'all will forgive me today, I'm not going to do this the way that we was intended to do it. It's hot. It's been a long time. And we're going to move on. We're going to use wisdom today. Amen. But I just want to say a few words because my niece asked me to do this. And I want to make sure I do what she asked me to do. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I'm going to give you a scripture so you don't leave and say I didn't even get a scripture. No. So, so we're going to look at Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, verse number one. Yeah. And it reads, for everything there is a season yeah. and a time for every purpose under the heaven. Amen. If I would title that with a topic is everything has its season. And if you will allow me just a few minutes just to talk about Greg. Amen. He was one that I had love for. One that anytime I came in contact with him, I had a good conversation with him. He was talking about where he was going and where he wanted to go. What he wanted to do. What he wanted to eat. Amen. 
Greg was one that was, he always had respect for those that was around him. He always looked at somebody, at everybody like they were somebody. So when I look at Greg uh, on March the 20th, 1992, a child was born. That child that was born grew up to be a man and stood on his word. And what I want to say about Greg that's more important than anything else, Greg had love. And Greg loved everybody. To look around this room on today, it proves that he had love and and he treated everybody right because people come from a long ways just to be here today. When I drove up to the church and I seen all the people on the outside, I was just like you. I saw them to cry. The day ain't the only day that I cried. Every time I thought about it, I cried. I cried on yesterday, sitting out in the yard by myself trying to prepare what I would say today. And I thought about Greg. I want to say to his mother today, this season that we're in, remember this. Some things is appropriate and some things is inappropriate. The inappropriate thing that happened, Greg's life was taken and he didn't deserve it. And I know you hurt. You got questions. But I come to tell you today, weeping and do it for a night. But joy comes in the morning. I don't know when your morning time going to come, yeah. but your, your joy is coming. Yeah. Just hold on. Keep looking up. Yeah. Keep your hands in the Lord's hand. Yeah. He said, I never need to know what I'm to say. Yeah. He said, I'll be with you to the end. Yeah. If you believe in that, you can make it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I don't know about you today, but I feel all right today. Just knowing that you's all right. Yeah. I know your heart is hurting, but I come to encourage you yeah. that we love you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Cause you've been a good mother. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Keep looking up. Yeah. Keep your hand in his hand. Yeah. Thank God for you. Yeah. Thank God for everybody in here for coming, yeah. showing her that you love her. And the last thing, not the last thing, but just about. <laughs> when I heard this well, on Mother's Day, that Greg was supposed to be coming to show off his lovely bride. All right. He didn't make it. <coughs> well, can I tell you, it's all right. Yeah. It's all right. Yeah. Keep your head up. Hallelujah, you're a part of the family. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Keep your head up. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. We love you. Yes. We appreciate you. Yes. And then, last but not least, least, I say this to Greg, and it took me a long time to write this or type this out, and it's real short. I'm sitting there trying to bake my end. And every time I begin to type, I begin to cry. But I say to Greg today, my brother, my friend, my nephew, ride on. Ride on.
Let every heart say amen, 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 amen. and amen. amen. Song says, because the Lord is my shepherd, I have everything I need. You see, he lets me rest in the meadow's grass, and he leads me beside the quiet stream. He restores my failing health, and he helps me to do what honors him the most. And that's why I'm safe. That's why I'm safe. That is why I'm safe. I'm safe in his arms. If it does your heart good to know that the spirit of Mr. Gregory Lamar Arnold Jr. is safe in the arms of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, then please join me at this time giving his memory a round of applause. Amen. of kindness, your encouraging words, your calls, your visits, and your thoughts. But most importantly, this family has been blessed with your prayers. Amen. See, we know that prayers change all things. And the Bible teaches us that the prayer of the righteous availeth much. So if you believe that in your hearts, we ask that you continue to pray for this family as they continue to pray one for another. Because truly, this family will need your prayers in the days to come. Amen? Amen. Amen. And a family that prays together, they will stay together. Amen. We thank God for the message. And truly, we thank God for the messenger. Please join me in giving Pastor Hill a round of applause at this time. For John Hill. of the angel of this house, Dr. Warnell Parker. We thank God for you. May God continue to keep and bless you for keeping the services decent and in order. Amen. God bless you. It's our prayer. We thank God for Bishop Jackson for being in attendance on today. God bless you, Bishop. Keep you as always. We thank God for Apostle Frank Goins for being on attendance for today. Amen. God continue to keep and bless you as well. Amen. And all the ministers of the gospel who may be in the pulpit, we thank God for you as well. Amen. God continue to keep you in the families and the Stevens and the staff prayer. God bless you. Amen. At this time, I would like to ask for Warden Williams. Amen. Deputy Warden Wiley, please stand at this time. And all of the wardens who may be here. Amen. As including the Georgia Department of Correction for faculty and staff. Please stand as well. And all other law enforcement, please stand at this time. Amen. I just want you to know that this is Gregory's extended family. And as you look around, we see that they're here for their brother. Amen. See, love is just not what it says, but it is what it does. And this is love. Amen. Let's give them a round of applause. Amen. Amen. God bless you for being here today. May heaven ever shine upon you. And we know that your brother is pleased with this. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. We thank God for everyone who helped this service be a special one for a special someone. We thank God for Pastor Miller for being in attendance on today. God bless you, Pastor Miller. We thank God for this beautiful choir singing from their hearts. God bless you. We thank God for these musicians playing from their hearts. Amen. To the ushers, to each and every one who made this service a special one, we say thank you. 
for those who are joining us via live stream. The family feels your support on today. And we ask that God bless you and heaven ever shine upon you is our prayer. And although the family may not stand to thank each of you individually, I stand to thank each of you collectively. May God bless you, heaven ever shine upon you, is the Arnold family's prayer. Amen.
or if there's anything that any of us can do in the days ahead, we're just a phone call away. And so on behalf of my dad, your Uncle Jim, Mr. Jim McGee Sr., and the entire Stevens McGee Funeral Home staff and family, always remember my family that earth has no sorrow, that heaven cannot heal. Amen? Amen. We say a special thank you to a gentleman that serves in a lane of his own. He's a multitasker, and he's someone that will get the task done if you need him. And that's Chief Willie Charles Clemens. And Chief Clemens. Your family is grateful for you, and so is the Stephen Tiki staff. Amen. We invite each of you to join our recessional to the Hillcrest Memorial Garden Cemetery here in Quitman, Georgia. Once we arrive there, you will notice that there are more friends and more loved ones awaiting our arrival. You see, after high school, Greg decided to serve his country, and the branch that he decided to serve within encourages men and women to be all you can be in the Army. So today, the casket is draped with our great American flag. And once we arrive at the cemetery, the soldiers of the United States Army will be waiting to render all of the honors that this soldier earned while he was serving this great country. Let us give the United States military a round of applause. We have a soldier on our staff, and he would like to show a special type of love to this soldier before we depart. Job well done, soldier. At this time, would the ministers of the gospel please stand? <laughs> Warden Williams, Deputy Warden Wiley, and the Department of Georgia Corrections, please stand. With the pallbearers, please stand.
<clears throat> for as much as it has pleased the Almighty God to take out of this world our brother Greg Honor Jr. We commit his body to Mother Earth. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Looking for the general resurrection in the last day and the life of the world to come through our Lord Jesus Christ that whom second coming is glorious. Majesty, judge shall be changed and made like unto his own glorious body according to the working whereby he is able to seduce all things unto himself. Prayer by Bishop. Shall we pray? Eternal God, our Father, as we come now for this precious moment in this season, allow us to recognize your goodness by sharing Gregory with us for this short time. We pray, Lord, for the family, the friends, those that have witnessed this homegoing, this celebration, and those who would cherish his memory and carry his life on into eternity. We pray now that you will give us strength to make the next step, to go to the next day, to do the next thing. We pray now for those who are here, who have gathered safe journeys, safe travels. We pray, Lord, that you would keep them and protect them, guide them. O oh, thou great Jehovah, pilgrims through this barren land, you are strong and mighty. Hold us with thy powerful hand. In Jesus' name we pray.
Wait, baby. I'll put it my mouth. Shall we pray? Lord, watch between us, watch over us as we're dismissed from this place. Dismiss us not from thy presence. Keep us in the center of thy will. We might keep you as the center of our joy. Protect us, guide us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Family, the red roses that you hold today, they represent the love, peace, happiness, and respect that you held for your loved one. You may keep them as a token of remembrance, or you may deposit them on the casket. Family and friends, we've been spiritually fed. We've been properly dismissed. You may now stand and safely return to your vehicles. May God bless you. One final note for anyone who would like to join the family for fellowship, we, the repast will be at the Evelyn McGee Repast Center, which is here in Quitman, Georgia, directly in front of the funeral home, 301 East Green Street. If you need directions, feel free to see me and I'll direct you. Thank you.